Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Visio. In this module, I want to have a look at a few different flowcharts that you can create using Visio. The first one I'm going to use is the basic flowchart and then a cross-functional flowchart, this one, and then have a quick look at the value stream mapping stencil and the business process model and notation stencil. But I'm going to focus, first of all, on a basic flowchart. So I'll just click on that one and I need a blank one. So once you get a blank flowchart on the screen, you get this stencil there. You've also got, that's the basic flowchart shapes. You've also got the cross-functional one in the same template. But I'm going to create a basic one. Now you have this start end shape, which is what I need to bring onto the screen first of all. So if I just drag that onto the screen, that's the start, and then you get these um, styles activated. The connector tool, if I put that on, when I drag the next shape on, it will automatically connect it up. So if I either bring a process on, there's a connection. Or these little arrows, if I click on another process, because this connector tool is active, it will just join in. And if I do a decision there, and then very quickly, you can create your flowchart by using these little tools. So that is great, but don't forget to take it off when you've finished and you want to start typing in the data. So you, you need an end. And now, now this is a dead end. I want this one to actually connect back up to the, the previous process. So I can draw that line there. Now I do need to take this off and start putting in the titles for each of these. So I'll just type a few words in. Um, finance. Spell it right. Finance. And then this is a decision. And then that's a yes, no. So that'll be no. So I'll just double click on that and put a no in there. And I'll double click on this line and put a yes in there. Yes to go on. So the, the question is um, payroll. And if they haven't got payroll, review docs or something like that. Going on to sales and then something very simple like that now with the basic flowchart you've got quite a few different tools that you can actually put around this and there's some information you can store inside these shapes so first of all let's go to design uh, we'll go for borders and titles so I'll just click on one of these now you can see there straight away that's sitting on the top of all my shapes so if I just do control a which will select everything, I can then just move this whole group down so it fits inside the border. Double click on uh, title, you will get nothing because this is actually a background page down here. So it's a bit of a weird thing when you do this in Visio if you're not used to this. When you create backgrounds or borders through this tool here, they appear as background pages so you can double click away until the cows come on, that's not going to let you type. You have to go onto the background page and then double click. And then you can type whatever you want as a title. And then when you click back onto page one, that will then come through as induction. So that's that one. Now, if I do, do the same for a background, I'll pick the globe. There's a globe. And you go back onto the background, click on there. And if you want, you can change the color of this. Um, let's make it red. Very nice. Back to page one. Obviously not nice, too much, but it doesn't matter. That's nice, I like the way it does that. Now each of these boxes has a, an area that you can store data. So if I click on this admin box, first of all, and then just go to the data tab, and then you can tick this option here, shape data window, and then this appears on the right hand side. With some preloaded 
data that you can then fill in. So you've got cost, process and stuff like that. If you want to add extra things into this box, into this particular box, you need to right click and go down into data and then define shape data. And what you can do is change the process. So what we haven't got here is owner. We've got owner, but let's say you don't want it to say owner. You want to call, call it manager. So you can just change that one. Leave it like that. And if you want to add a new one, you just go new. And what haven't we got there? So um, we've got start date, end date, status, owner, um, department. Let's put department. Who's in, who's um, responsible for this so department and then that becomes part of this if I just click OK and I'll come back into it so it sits at the bottom there now I don't like this order you can change this sort order if you want so let's have manager department cost at the top so what you need to do there is just go back into it right click data define shape data and you need to give it a a sort order so manager so what you've got to do is sort key manager wants to be one what did i say manager department two and cost three i'm not bothered about the rest so cost three oops three click ok to that and they they change their order so that's how you give them i could move status up there as well but you could just you just give that a number then it, it sorts it for you and then you can fill the information in Mr. Green is the manager, department, um, sales say, and cost for this one is £2,000. Uh, I'm not going to fill the rest in, but they get the idea. Now, doing it like I've just done there, when I click on to finance, finance hasn't got that department field and it's not sorted the same way, so that's a bit of a bummer. So that, I don't want to have to do that over and over again. So what you've got on the developer tab, if I go into developer, now if you haven't got the developer tab, you'll need to go file um, options and custom ribbon and then tick developer so it comes on. Okay. On there you've got the document stencil. If I just tick that, this is the stencils that have used uh, have been used. So what I could do is I should have edited that one. So if I bring that process one on, that has not been edited. Now, can I bring that one across to this? Yes, I can. So I'll call it test. So when I bring that one back across, that's got all the things in it that I want. Get rid of that one. So if you're going to do stuff like that, the, the thing I would do is get it set up first, how you want the shape data to appear by using this document stencil and then every one you bring on a copy of that is going to have the same information in the same order so it's going to save you loads of time but that's all I want to do for that one let's just get rid of this um, close that back to the basic flowchart shapes now if you want to go into a second page you've got this off page reference if I just drag that on the screen it goes onto page two because I haven't got a page two uh, if I had a page two I could tick that, but the, all I've got there is the background page, so I don't want that. So page two, okay, and then it's just a double click, just move that down a bit, double click between the two to take you from one to, to the other. So that's just the off page reference if your flowchart goes across multiple pages. Now, so that was a basic um, flowchart. And I've showed you shape data. So let's have a look at the cross-functional flowchart. And I'll do it in here. I'll go on to page two. I'll get rid of that now. I don't want it. This stencil is already there. So I could go file new and get a complete new one there. That just starts the other way. If I just do that, I'll show you. So it just goes the other way. You've got the same information. Both, both stencils are on there. So I'll get rid of that. I don't want that. Not saving it. Back to this one. So you've got swim lines or swim lanes and you can bring these on by just dragging them. So I'll just drag a one on and then you get your title. Now the title might clash with this title, hopefully not. But if I just bring a, I'll bring um, three across. So then your title for this is 
um, sales process sales process say for example and then we've got um, initial confirm I'm just making this up so anybody's in sales don't pick me up confirmed and complete right so those are the, the three sections um, that we've got or three lanes now you bring in your shapes on so there's no shapes there but you've got your basic flow chart shapes here now again if I go back to home put the connector tool on now there's a bit of a funny thing goes on here so I'll still bring a, a start you still have to have a start and an end I'll go for a process now I want a process to be crossing over so I need to take that off for a second to make this bigger like so now that line you can move it to wherever you want it to go if it's not great to see it there you probably need to maybe add another connection point which is what you do there I'll try it I'll do that actually so you do that by clicking this little cross hold your control key down and then move to where you want the connection point so if I want the connection point there I'll click it onto there you see it there and when I click that back to there I should be able to pick that up that one and then go to that connection point there so now it goes across so I'm not very good at lining things up obviously so that's not lined up Let's see if I can get it to straighten a bit nearly well, I don't want to faff about doing that anyhow I've got it across two two things which is two two lanes which is what I wanted to do now if you use these in my experience if you use these things that come out of the bottom or out of the side uh, eventually there what it tends to do is make the shape the swim lane bigger so if I do that I don't want to do that actually it's undo so sod's law it hasn't done it but what I found in the past is that it does make these these swim lanes bigger they go bigger if I expand this that's not doing it which is great let's try that again on this side let's go for one of these and let's try and make this bigger no it's not doing it oh that's great oh well if it does make it bigger what you have to do is basically connect these up manually um, so I want a line coming from that to that that'll do and from there into there like so and then take that off now I'm not liking this background so I'm just going to get rid of this background because it's taking up um, it's difficult to see these lines if these lines need to be thicker you've got the line option and you can do weight and just make them thicker like so line I'll, I'll just do two whatever thickness or if you want like this might be a temporary a thing that's not constant so you might want it to be dot dashed and make the line thicker as well so you can see it there now you've still got the off page reference for this as well if you want to drop one of those on if this is going on to separate separate pages the same thing happens you just double click between the two and it, and it drops off now on this one we need an end so I'll just drag a, an end there and I'll do a connector from this option to that option take the pointer tool back on so if this starts playing around in terms of the swim lanes I didn't actually get it to do it on mine which is a bit of a pain but if it does it's because you're using the automatic connector um, tool and, and just letting it connect up and it sometimes makes the swim lanes fit this size of this box like I said already if that happens just delete the delete the automatic connector and do it yourself afterwards so that's basically a flow chart cross-functional flow chart and the shape data is there again if you want to change this I suggest you get the document stencil on change it in there and use use that one to bring things on so you've got the information that you want take that back over there home 
Now, a couple of other, that, those are the two main shapes, types, if you like, basic uh, flowchart and a cross-functional flowchart, but you've got others that you can look at. I'm not going to do them, but I'll show you a couple. So I'll show you this business process model and notation diagram. Now, this one is, this is, this has got a set of rules. So you've got a swim lane inside a pool. So there's two lanes in a pool. So test is a pool. That's a lane. Now with this one, there is actually uh, industry standards rules that you have to set. And if you've got it wrong, it'll come up and tell you you've got it wrong and what you need to change. Like basically you need a start and an end and stuff like that. And you can't just have things open-ended. And you click on this little tool here and it will do the rules or check the rules um, and then tell you whether you've got it right or not. So that's that business process model. You've also got value stream mapping, which is a flowchart, a common business tool where you're mapping out how you produce things or how you do things between yourself, your supplier and your customer. So this is just a diagram. And again, this has got set shapes that you should be using to indicate different things. And this is just an example of that. So flowcharts, there's quite a lot of different types of flowcharts. And obviously you can just create your own. There's the basic one, which we did, the cross-functional flowchart we did, and then this uh, business process model and notation diagram, and then this value stream mapping diagram, all flowcharts, all part of Visio. So lots and lots of tools that you can use in Microsoft Visio. So hopefully this quick little overview has been of use to you. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you on the next one.